Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. I am in my new electric van and I thought I'd put a little video together explaining all about it. Let's get straight to it. So we'll start by looking at the cab from the driver's point of view and you can see the dashboard is very similar to what you would normally find in a diesel or petrol vehicle. We've got a speedometer. It starts to get a little bit different with some of the gauges and their interpretation and things they're measuring but we've got an eco gauge here all the way up to max and that shows if you're consuming lots of energy in your normal driving style or you've got the heaters running and things you've got your battery gauge over here which shows you how much charge is in the battery and then this gauge over here which indicates if you're driving um, in a powerful state if you're driving economically and then this green gauge here is when you're regenerating so as you brake and go downhill you can regenerate power back into the battery as you're driving along and that ties in with the options selectable from here as well so with the driver mode we've got eco normal and also the power mode so as you were just through those it affects your range and some of the features that will work in the vehicle we'll speak about that later on we've then got reverse drive neutral park and then this b button here which impacts the battery regeneration so it kind of makes the vehicle brake and regen power a little bit more as you slow down to junctions or you're running downhill the rest of the cab is pretty much as you would find in any other vehicle. There's storage and cubby holes up here so we can get notepads and things, books in, up in the way there. There's a little bit of storage in the glove box, as you can see over here. And then some cup holders dotted around as everybody needs to use their vehicles. Little bits of storage holes and spaces. Um, again, just dotted around the place. And the front seat will fold right down and you can get longer lengths through from the rear storage area into the front and you can see here it shows you you should use one of the bags when you do that that comes with the vehicle as well so if you are putting longer length through to the front of the vehicle you're supposed to put that bag over the seat and the bits you're pushing through into that i guess it's to to stop them going through the front windscreen um, usual sun visors and and lights and bits and pieces it really is how you would find any modern day van. This does also come equipped with a Peugeot Connect and we'll speak a bit about that later on. And we've got a little dash cam here that came with the van as well. I think it was the lease company who provided that rather than Peugeot. Other than that, this is pretty much as you would find in any work vehicle. There is nothing too different other than the mode of propulsion. And you can see the information screen here. It has the Android and Apple Drive, whatever we're gonna call it, Apple Play where you can connect your phone and use Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever you want to do, get the podcast Spotify on. It does all of that. Point of note, and it is limited to the actual hardware rather than the, the software. Um, these have to have a USB lead connecting between those points to get Apple CarPlay and Android Drive to work with the actual screen. So it wouldn't do it over Bluetooth. I know some of the newer vehicles, the Nissan that we have in our fleet, does that so it will work over bluetooth this one doesn't appear to do so again we've got the air conditioning which is a great feature and um, yeah that's kind of the inside we'll have a look in the rear of the vehicle and the storage that's back there and then have a wander around the outside and take a look okay so again in the back there's plenty of storage space in here that's the load compartment i was talking about which opens up to allow longer lengths to be pushed through we've got a side loading door on the passenger side none on the driver's side and then we've got these split 60 40 doors on the back and they can be widened out by the release tags that are common on all vans so there's nothing really different about that i've been able to get a good load in here working day to day i'll speak a bit later on in the video about how i've been using this and some of the range impacts we've had because of that again we've got this ply lined it's not going to be racked out for those of you who follow the channel you'll know we use the milwaukee pack out got one of the boxes down here but we generally take what we need in the trolleys and um, unload every day so we don't have a need for van racking. We try to be organised. We're pretty experienced at that now and it works very well for us. Let's look around the exterior of the van. So again, from the outside, this just looks like any Peugeot partner van, aside from the green flag on the number plate, which indicates this is electric. Again, we've got the black paint. This is still waiting to be sign written if we sign write it added these sparker wheel trims they didn't um, come on the van itself again we've got the rear doors on the back here and the same again down this side with the charging port and this does both the rapid charging and your normal type 2 charging so if you're pulling up to a charge point to rapid charge you need both of those going in whereas if you're just charging up at home 
goes in that top one there. And um, yeah, as opposed to putting diesel and petrol in, you are inserting electricity. It takes a little bit longer to put it in, but I've not had an issue so far, and we'll speak about that in a little while. And then again, down this side, we've got the side loading door, which opens up into the rear storage space. This is the flap that lifts down. Might as well demonstrate that while we're here as well, so you can see through into the front cab. And over in there is a nice driver's position. All of the stuff I'd mentioned before, the seats are fully adjustable, the steering wheel's adjustable, basically everything you would normally find in a van. There is nothing different about that from a driver's point of view, other than the engine itself. So one of the things I was interested in is what's actually in the bonnet, and you can see it looks like a normal engine kind of setup arrangement in here. To the layman looking at this, you wouldn't really notice any different. There's still a 12 volt battery, we've got the brake fluid over there, there's other washer levels and bits and pieces dotted around the engine bay. And what looks like a normal diesel or petrol engine, but obviously this is something to do with the electric motor and how all of that energy is transferred from the battery into the wheels driving it along the road. But just interesting to see. A um, little bit more space than I suppose you might normally find in an engine bay, but generally looks the same as normal. So I wanted to give this van a fair chance before I dropped a review onto YouTube of my experiences with it. And so I've allowed a getting on towards a month or so now of driving it every day, a couple of thousand miles on the clock, and some varied uses as well. So we've done some jobs a bit further away from our normal work area over in Stoke, where we've been doing 300 miles in a day, and then again using this more locally, covering off EV charge points, solar PV jobs, consumer units, the basic stuff that a normal electrician will tackle week to week, and that's within kind of a 10 or 15 mile radius of our office. And I've had reasonable results in all applications, I've got to say. It does involve a bit of a change in mindset and planning your routes when you are going on those longer, longer journeys. And to get the best value out of the electric engine, also factoring in, putting it on charge at the right times as well. So with the, the longer journeys, we, ne we need to stop in this vehicle. There's no getting away from that. It has a range of 182 miles in eco mode. However, once you start driving on motorways and bits of traffic and things build up, it tends to drop away to around 160 or so. And obviously you don't want to be completely running out of that mileage when you're looking for a charge point. So I've kind of drawn the line in the sand at around 130, 140 miles at the point I will then um, use a rapid charger and, and fill up. And that seemed to work quite well on the longer distance route we had. It was about 150 miles in one direction. So I was stopping I know, 10 or 15 miles or so before I got there onto a rapid charger to get back up to 80%. So then I knew when I was setting off on the return journey, I had a good amount of range before I needed to make another stop again to then get back home. So it does encourage you to take stops and breaks often when we're driving. And I've been really guilty of this over the years when you're trying to just get home after a day's work or make an appointment. You maybe keep driving longer than you necessarily should. With an electric vehicle, you're kind of left with no option because you need to put that charge back in. And it has to be said, taking this from sort of, I don't know, a 15, 20% capacity all the way back up to 80% fully um, on, charged on the rapid charger because that last 20% it ramps down the charge rate. There's no point sitting there taking power in um, at that level. That takes less than 20 minutes. So typically you can stop, grab a coffee, go and into the toilet, stretch your legs, and by the time you've done all that, had a look at a couple of emails, you're ready to go again. So I've not found that a problem. Um, first time out, I did do the typical man thing where I jumped in the van, just set off, made no attention to any of the apps that are out there to help you find rapid charges. I just thought I'd go to a service station on the motorway and be able to plug in and charge up. And as it turned out, that didn't work. The first charger I went to at Tibshelf Tib Services didn't work. I used Google to find some others around the corner. They didn't work. Went to a BP Pulse around the corner again from that, and that didn't work. And it was at that stage I installed Zap Maps, and that just transformed everything, because that is brilliant. You can plot your route, just like Google Maps, put your destination in, it'll tell you what the best place to charge is along that route, when the charges have last been used, um, if they're working, so you've got all that information to have reasonable confidence that when you rock up, you're going to be able to fill the vehicle up with electricity. And since I've done that, I've not had a problem. More locally is when this comes into its own. So with the rapid charging, it is quite expensive to fill with electricity between sort of 65 and 80p um, a kilowatt hour, depending on your provider of choice. So that's not low cost energy. 
and roughly speaking I'm getting 3.6 miles per kilowatt so you know that's that's expensive motoring I would say at that level but if you factor in the ability to charge this off solar energy when I'm working more locally with that 160 mile range and I'm only doing 10-15 miles a day I can get a week's usage out of a weekend's charge up if that makes sense so I've got solar PV on my house I can put this fan on the drive Friday afternoon and any excess generation from my house and we do export quite a bit when the weather's reasonable can go into the van ready for me to drive around for free the next week um, so I would say with the rapid charges it seems to be coming out sort of 20 25p a mile ish which compares with the larger vans that we run on diesel fully loaded so the yarn and the cost comparison at that level the very best However, if you're charging up from home, obviously generally we all pay around 30-35p a unit, it becomes more cost beneficial even without solar PV with a small electric van. There's obviously no road tax um, and you've got the added benefit that you can generally in some city centres park for free while you charge up as well. So if you are regularly working in some of the big cities of the UK, there's the payback there because parking can be quite expensive. Sometimes it's cheaper just to collect parking tickets. So there is that as well that factors into it. Um, I've just been getting consistent. When I get home on an evening, always plug it in just in case there is some extra solar generation that I can put into the van and um, making the best use of the weekend charges. And primarily the aim of this van is just going to be to serve the local area. We're not planning on taking this longer distances. That was really a test of the van when I got it, taking it off to Stoke to go and help the guys out on a solar job we had for Matt. Um, it was just to see what the van could do really. It's not going to be doing that very often. I'm going to be using this to go and do EV installations, consumer unit changes, EICRs. We're very organised in what we take to site. We keep a limit on the weight that we're putting in the back. Everything we need can be put into this van and it can be used day to day as I have been doing now for the last few weeks to carry out those tasks. Can you fill it with um, an all-in-one from Give Energy and start putting solar panels in a trailer on the back and expect to drive around without any troubles. I don't think so. We do have larger electric vans coming into the fleet as well, so it'd be interesting to see how they perform in the next few months or year or whatever it takes for them to arrive. And yeah, that will be more of an interesting one as we look to try and move all tradespeople over to electric vehicles in the coming years. Because I was concerned about range, and I have found that just by adding weight to the back hasn't really impacted range at all. As I say, I tend to get around 160 miles as an average driving around in eco mode. I'll speak a bit about the modes again before we end this video. Um, and I think some of the larger vehicles have a similar range as well. The Peugeot Expert, which is the next size up of these vans, I think that's just over 200 miles range or so. And again, you are limited at the weights you can put in the back because of the overall weight of the vehicle as well. So there's those things to consider if you do carry around a lot of gear in terms of materials and your tools. You've got to think about that while you before you go committing to an electric vehicle. But yeah, not a problem really. That first day we're charging up, that was difficult, but that was just me taking the attitude of, well, it's a van, I'm going to treat it as I would any petrol or diesel van and I expect to drive it around and not have an issue regardless. That was kind of my approach at the beginning. I've since had to change my mindset and accept that that won't work. So there is a bit of more planning and I found an app that makes that really simple. So it's no real hardship. Um, and yeah, other than that, it's been quite a nice experience. To drive, these are really nice. So the eco mode, it seems to turn the heating off for some reason, but it does leave the aircon on, drops the fan speeds down a little bit and you just get those extra few miles range. So in eco mode, it seems to be about 182 miles range before any other factors of traffic and driving style. And that drops to about 174 if you're in normal mode and into the 160s in the power mode. And normal mode seems quite similar to eco mode, apart from obviously the heating works and uh, the vehicle functions as normal, essentially. Um, and the power of the vehicle does seem to increase ever so slightly on eco. So the accelerator is more responsive and things like that. When you put this into power mode, it is actually super duper quick. I was very surprised at how much power this would lay down when it was in power mode. And it's not so much its top speed and you know getting 0 to 60 in so many seconds, but those of you who drive a van will know 
having that reaction in terms of acceleration is sometimes really useful when you are driving around city centres and you're trying to uh, avoid buses and cyclists and all the rest of that stuff. Um, so that will come into play from time to time, but generally as it's summer, I've been driving this round in eco, I don't need the heating on, the air conditioning works anyway, maximise the range. It's going to be really interesting to see how this performs in winter. I am aware the batteries don't perform as well, I'm expecting we will have a drop off in those ranges. Obviously I'm going to be driving around in normal mode, I am not driving around in the van with a coat on just to try and get an extra 10 miles down the road, that is not happening. So I've said about adjusting my mindset in terms of refueling and using the apps. I'm not going to be doing that. If that's the level we have to go to, then electric vehicles for tradespeople simply do not work. Um, we do need better infrastructure out there on the motorways. Obviously, I've limited my use so far to sort of between my house and Stoke. I'm aware that down south, for example, there is difficulties in the rapid charging network um, and those discussions and government uh, works are all ongoing so hopefully that is something that is fixed for the long term um, as more people adopt electric vehicles that problem is only going to get worse if not so I'm hopeful that that will be the case um, and yeah so far so good I've got to say this vehicle will work for a tradesperson so long as you are trying to get charged up as often as you can and um, understanding you do have to plot your route if you want access to a rapid charger you can still get all the basic gear in the back if you're a plumber, electrician, joiner. Perfectly capable of carrying your tools for the day as the same size petrol or diesel would in my experience of using this so far. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. We can end this video on that note. If you have any questions about the van and you want any of them answering in particular, please do drop them in the comments and I will do my very best. I'm going to do a few more of these videos as time moves along when I've got a bit of experience of it over winter and can share the battery range issues that we might encounter because of that and we'll show it out on one or two jobs as well we've got um, a job installing some electric heaters later this week where i'm going to film some bits of content and this van will be used because it's two miles from our office i'll be taking things to and from site in it and we'll see how we get along so thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one